In this video, we'll be solving a cubic equation. A cubic equation is a third degree equation, and it will have at most three solutions if we're working in the set of complex numbers. Now recall the following rules from factoring the sum or difference of cubes. If you have the sum of cubes, you'll use the plus sign in the binomial up front and then you're allowed one minus sign so it will appear here and then the other one is plus. If you have a minus between the cubes then the minus sign will appear in the binomial and you'll have pluses in the two. The binomial terms are the cube roots of these cubes and then once you have your binomial established, then you square the first term to get the first term in the trinomial. Multiply the first by the second to get the middle term in the trinomial. And then square the second term of the binomial to get the last term in the trinomial. So let's do a problem. The example that we'll be doing is to solve x cubed minus 125 is equal to 0. Now if we took this 125 to the right side, we'd have x cubed equals 125, and then cube root both sides, all we would get would be the x equals 5. Now we want three solutions if we're working in the set of complex numbers. So we need to factor this difference of cubes using this rule. So we'll have a binomial multiplied by a trinomial and that product is equal to zero. Now our first term of our binomial is the cube root of the first term that we're factoring. So the cube root of x cubed is x. And then uh, we're only allowed the 1 minus sign. And so since this is uh, the difference of cubes, our minus will be here. And we'll have pluses in these two positions. And then the cube root of 125 will be the last term in the binomial because that's the cube root of the last term that you're factoring. So the cube root of 125 is 5. Now once you've established your binomial, then you're going to use these terms in the binomial to get your terms in the trinomial. So the first term here in the trinomial is the first term of the binomial squared. And then the middle term of the trinomial is the product of these two absolute values, so just 5x. Ignore the sign. And then the last term of the trinomial is the square of the last term in the binomial, so we have 25. Now the zero factor property says that if you have two factors multiplied together and their product is zero, then one or the other is equal to zero, or both. So we'll set each of those equal to zero. And then solve. We can solve this easily. We'll add 5 to both sides. These will cancel, and we have x equals 5. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Or, and then on this one, we're going to need to use the quadratic formula. It doesn't factor. So we can see that a is equal to 1, b is equal to 5, and C is equal to 25. So let me write the quadratic formula here. X is equal to 
a negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now we just need to substitute these values into our formula to find the other two solutions. So we have x is equal to negative, and our b is 5, plus or minus square root of, now b squared is 5 squared, which is 25, subtract 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 25. And that's all over 2 times a, which is 1. Right. Um, let's simplify here. We're going to need to multiply back here first. So we have x is equal to a negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25. And then... Uh, Negative 4 times 1 times 25 is going to be a negative 100. And in the bottom, I have a 2. 25 minus 100 is negative 75. So x is equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 75 over 2. Now we can see a few things that need to be done right here. Uh, the negative under the radical means that I have an imaginary number. So I'll bring that negative out and write i. So I have x equals negative 5 plus or minus i, because square root of negative 1 is defined as i. And then I can also break 75 into uh, the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. And then in the bottom, I still have my 2. Um, square root of 25 is 5. So x is equal to a negative 5 plus or minus i times 5 times square root of 3 all over 2. Now, whenever we have a complex number, um, we are often asked to write it in a plus bi form, which means we want to separate the two terms. So we first want to write our solution here. That's 5. And then um, when we separate our two terms, we can write negative 5 over 2. And then plus or minus. And then this term I'm going to write as 5 root 3 over 2 or 5 halves root 3. And then the i will be back in the back. So our 5 over 2, I'm writing that here as a rational number. And then our irrational number will be in the second factor. And then the i. So this is my solution set for this cubic equation. Notice we have three solutions. We have the 5, and then we have one solution with plus, and then one solution with the minus.